Hello and welcome to my presentation on anatomy of a Zeek Spicy Protocol Analyzer. My name is Keith Jones. There's my website, just drkeithjones.com. And I've got all my social media links and so forth all connected at the top of that. So if you're interested in connecting with me and uh, talking about this topic or other topics that I've created some videos on, go ahead and uh, visit that website and connect with me on social media. While you're, <clears throat> excuse me, while you're here at YouTube, be sure to click subscribe and like. Um, that lets me know what types of videos people enjoy seeing. And when you click subscribe, um, it will then notify you anytime I come up with a new video like these Zeke how-tos that I've been uh, releasing lately. All right, so in a previous video, I will link it up here. We created a My Protocol Spicy Analyzer. And this is just a name I gave it, as an example name. I called it My Protocol. And we're not targeting any specific protocol. I just want to walk you through the different pieces of a spicy analyzer. So later on, when we do talk about a real protocol, you'll be able to understand the different pieces that I'm talking about. So if you missed the first uh, YouTube video that I put together or you just don't want to sit through it, um, here's the spoiler. I put it all on your screen there. You got your command, which is just the ZKG create command there. And then it's going to ask you a bunch of questions about uh, how you want to make this protocol analyzer. So in this case, I just called it my underscore protocols, the, um, the package name. And um, it wants to know what's the analyzer name. So in this one, I use camel case and I said, you know, it's just my protocol. And then I ask you what protocol it's running over. And this means um, the, I, the IP protocol, what's on top of IP. So in this case, it would be like TCP or UDP. For this example, I just picked UDP. And then it says, what default unit do you want to parse each direction of the connection in Zeek terms? It's either a ridge or RESP. You can have two different units. Um, most protocols that I've developed, I'd say like 90% plus usually use the same unit in both direction, but there are other units like um, uh, TN3270, for instance, that will use uh, a unit in one direction and then a completely different unit in the other direction. And Spicy lets you do that here. Um, here's an example where you could actually just make like my unit A and my unit B, depending on what it is you're parsing. Now let's talk about some important directories that were created once we ran the ZKG create command. The first big directory is just going to be the analyzer directory, and this contains the spicy code. Caveat here. Now, this is this version of ZKG create. If you used a previous version, sometimes it took the scripts or the previous methodology were to take what was in scripts and analyzer and put it all in the analyzer directory. So just know that it's not always this directory structure, but if you're using the latest versions of ZKG create, it will be this, uh, this directory structure. So again, the analyzer should have all the spicy code. In older versions, it'll have the Zeek code. But in the newer versions, there's a scripts directory, just like a scripts package directory. And inside there, that's where the Zeek code lies. Now, another important directory is the testing directory. And the testing directory has some subdirectories you should be aware of. There's a baseline directory, which basically once you create your tests and you create the baseline to um, of what a correct test would look like, it gets stored in that baseline subdirectory. I use this directory a lot of times to show people example logs. So if I have like a con.log log that we're looking at in our test, if I want an example con.log, log, I can go to that baseline directory and pull that data out and show someone and you know be able to talk through it. There's a tests directory under the testing 
directory, and this contains your actual tests, and that is in form of B tests, which is usually in form of some kind of Zeek source code. There's a traces directory, and that traces directory will usually have PCAPs that you're going to use for testing. So in your testing framework, you usually have some scripts that will run Zeek in a certain configuration on a PCAP trace in the traces directory. And a successful test will have its data then stored in the baseline directory. I hope that tied it together for you. Now, um, what you're seeing on your screen is this directory that I created using the ZKG create command. And you see there's the analyzer directory, just like, like I talked about earlier. It's got the EVT files and the spicy files. It's all spicy related files. And then there's the scripts directory, which has the Zeek side of things. And you can see like the dpd.sig and the main.zeek. And then you have their testing directory, which is what I just went through. And you have your baseline um, and your tests and your traces directory. And I just showed you the examples there. One of the things I wanted to show you too is on the right-hand side of your screen, there's an, exact, an example test. So I'm not going to th go through what B tests are, but B tests basically look in the comments field and run things in a certain configuration. And I highlighted the box in the upper right-ish area of your screen there where it shows you what tests are being run. So it's a Zeek command that's run on a particular trace. Uh, it's running it with this package on this input and it's saving the information to a file called output. And then the B test then does a B test diff on the output and the myprotocol.log, assuming you create some myprotocol.log. And you see a to-do there. And anywhere you see to-dos, those are areas where you want to go and basically make it specific to your protocol. So you can do a quick search across the whole pro across the whole project for to-do. And when you find that, that's, those are usually the things you have to change. And this is all boilerplate here where it shows you a message at the bottom. And once you start making protocols, you're gonna you're gonna modify this into what your protocol calls for, but we're not there yet. So we're just gonna look at the boilerplate stuff. Now there's some important files. There's the ZKG meta file, and this is what ZKG uses to build the package and install it for you. There's an analyzer directory. And in this directory, well, I should say in this analyzer directory, there are three important files. There's the My Protocol EVT, which sets up the analyzer and sets up your events. There's a My Protocol at Spicy, which is all the spicy code. And then there's a Zeek underscore My Protocol at Spicy, which is the glue between Zeek and Spicy. And when I first started doing writing Spicy analyzers, I never really understood why they split those out. And once you start doing some development with like spicy driver and so forth, and you take Zeke out of the picture, you'll see how easy it is to do development on spicy code without Zeke in the picture. And you can do some iterative development very, very quickly. And the way these files are set up um, using ZKG create makes that very quick for you. So I might do a video on that in the future of how to quickly iterate and do um, some spicy development. But uh, at this point, you'll just kind of have to take my word on it. Now, our scripts directory has all the things that we've known to love with Zeek. There's a dpd.sig, and this is a dynamic protocol detection signature file that says to enable our new my protocol, uh, protocol analyzer when a certain content is seen. And then there's a main.zeek, which is just the Zeek source code that's run uh, when our analyzer is confirmed on a connection. So this is the my protocol EVT file. And what I wanted to point out was right in the middle there, uh, lines nine through 12, that sets up an analyzer for you. That sets up the name. It sets up the units that are connected to each side of the connection. 
and if so desired, actually connects it to a port for you too. At the bottom of line 17, this is our first event that we have set up through a unit that we have on the spicy side. So if I flip over to the my protocol at spicy, you see this is just one unit. Now I'm not going to go into units because this is a whole topic on its own. But this unit is probably the most trivial unit that you could have, which basically says eat up all the rest of the bytes. That's what the EOD stands for. It says to the end of the data. So nothing real fancy here. You get data, it puts it into this payload variable all the way to the end. Now here, this is what I was talking about earlier, the spicy driver, that's the command that I use for iterative development. And I just, in white print at the below that, I showed you, you can cat out some data and basically put spicy driver or have spicy driver compile your protocol. My bad, that should say my protocol that's spicy. And what it does is it compiles it and then runs data through it. And if you put print statements in your spicy logic, you can then start to see these units and print out values and so forth. So um, it gets really useful. And what I did is I showed you in a bullet here, if you want to create that some data that data is what I called it, you just go into Wireshark. And once you're in Wireshark, you switch to raw and then you save it out as a file. And that gets rid of the IP and TCP and UDP portions of that. It just gives you the data. And then you can take that data and then run it through Spicy Driver and my protocol on Spicy and do some real quick development. And like I said, later on, hopefully I'll make a video on how, how I do it. All right, so this is what it looks like in Wireshark. You just switch the data to raw, you pick which side of the conversation you want, click save as, and then you save it. This is the Zeek underscore my protocol spicy. And there's a couple things I want to point out. Lines 13 through 15, they're commented out. And this is the biggest mistake usually someone new to spicy makes. Uncomment these lines because these say, when I properly parse some kind of unit, I want to confirm my protocol. If you don't call <laughs> confirm protocol, it never actually identifies it as my protocol and it looks like nothing ever happens and you spend time on your signatures or your Zeek logic or something else and it's just the fact that you didn't confirm it and then you basically you want to error condition too so if the if the my protocol doesn't parse correctly you want some kind of rejection notice back to Zeek and that's what lines 18 through 20 do for you on this slide Now the dpd.sig file, this is just the dynamic protocol detection signature file. There is a whole section on Zeek documentation on how to write signatures. I'm not going to go over all this. What, what I do want to show you is if you want to use it, you got to comment it out in the dpd.sig stub that it creates for you. So lines four through eight in this stub. And basically, um, line six in here, this is where you say, this is the type of content I want to see on the wire in order to enable my analyzer, to have my analyzer start looking at it. Now, which analyzer? Well, that's line seven. In this case, it would be enable the spicy underscore my protocol analyzer. So when line six, the condition is hit where it sees that type of content, Line seven is enabled, if that makes sense. But to do any of this, you have to uncomment it out and fill it out to uh, be specific to your protocol that you're trying to parse. Now, on the Zeek side, I'm in the scripts directory now, again, like I was with dpd.sig. 
But now we're looking at main.zeke, and I just have three screen captures on here for you, and we're not going to go through this line by line. I will tell you generally it sets up the logging for you automatically. It sets up um, uh, places where you can store information about the protocol on the connection record. Um, all this stuff you used to have to write by hand. ZKG Create does this automatically for you, uh, which is saves tons and tons and tons of time. It also makes your code consistent. If you use ZKG Create always to create spicy analyzers, then your spicy analyzers tend to look similar across different types of protocols that you write. But what I did is I flicked to the next screen here. You can see, you know, it creates some logging for you. It's got the set session created for you. It has a function called emit log. And then it's got um, this event on line 63 that then handles when one of those units is parsed. And again, I'm not going to go over that. I'll have another video for that at some point. But when you can tell Spicy in that .evt file, when a unit is parsed, run a certain Zeek event on it. And it's all kind of wired together. This is the default one that is created with the ZKG create command. And then you can see I scroll down a little bit more. It's just the ending there with the connection state remove. Um, if it's a TCP, that's usually when you do your um, log writing. If it's UDP, it kind of depends on what the connection is, but um, sometimes it's per message as well. All right, so how do you build an analyzer? Well, these are the commands. Um, you want to go into the analyzer directory and you want to basically make this build directory. You want to run CMake, which will configure things for you. And then you want to run the CMake dash dash build dot. And I know it's hard to see in the slide, but that's actually a, a dash dash build on the last line there. And what that does is it runs a configuration for you. It does a compilation process and so forth. So this is just an example of uh, this plugin where I went in and um, for my protocol, I just went and built it. So why would you want to build it? Because you want to test it. So in order to test your analyzer, you need to change directory into the testing directory. And if you're already in the build directory, you need to actually go up a directory and then go over to your testing directory. And then you just run btest. In this case, I ran btest on our stub that ZKG created. And you can see that the three tests that it created, they all come back successful. Um, you're going to use this, or at least I use this in my development process. And then once... My development is done. Then I use the btest dash capital U to create my new baseline. And that sets my new test. So then I know if there's any deviation in my code where my tests break, I know there's a problem. So what do you do? Let's say you're done creating your uh, protocol. You want to install it. So the easiest way to install is just install it with ZKG. So here I'm showing you that ZKG install dot because I'm actually in the directory. And it says, do you want to install this my protocol? And I said, yes. And it takes a little bit and does this compilation. And then it says it's installed and loaded. So what I showed you with the red boxes at the bottom was to verify that I did install it and that it's in properly, properly installed. I ran Zeek with the dash capital N capital N. And then I grepped out looking for anything that says my protocol. And you can see in the lower red box that there's a spicy underscore my protocol analyzer that's enabled. So this is works. It's in my spicy ins installation at this point. And, you know, if it had logic to it, it would work. So hopefully in a uh, video soon, I'll be able to take you through some real spicy analyzers now that you understand what files you have to go to and where the layout is for different things in the spicy Zeek world. 
So lastly, once you do all your work and you create your protocol and everything is how you like it, don't forget, push it up to a Git repository. That gets started with the Git, I'm sorry, with the ZKG create command. It actually does a Git init, so it has the first commit in there for you. So basically anything else you add on top of it will then be changes at that point. So I'll remind you again, if you stayed to the end of the video, if you liked it and you want to see more content on Zeek like this, click like and subscribe. That lets me know people are watching it and it's um, worth the uh, several hours of time it takes to create and think about and put together slides and publish it. So that's all I ask. If you could just like and subscribe to let me know that you like these things, I'll keep publishing more. All right. Thanks for visiting.